Tonight on Joy News Prime, opposition NDC urges government to terminate Yoko's probe of the Auditor General they describe as a witch hunt and rather demand arrest of senior minister Yao Safoma for over procurement breaches highlighted by the Auditor General. We cannot have two sets of laws in Ghana, one for the family and friends of President Akufuado and another for all the other Ghanaians. Public sector workers threatening strike over discrepancies with their pension contributions launched with the Social Security and National Insurance Trust SNIT. Regrettably, state has failed to comply with the MPI directives on past credits. What this stated in its press statements is false, and this is a deliberate attempt to cheat the worker. Monday afternoon, windstorm causes massive damage to property in eastern region town of Somania. Ghana Fire Service and then the Ghana Police Service. We are here now trying to salvage the three members from the room just to make the place very accessible. We're there to get the very latest and in business. Economist Professor Peter Corte backs Monetary Policy Committee's decision to maintain the lending rate at 16% for the fifth time this year. What review is not justified and, and it's also not in tandem with government policy of ensuring lower prices, lower interest rates. And tonight we bring you a hotline documentary titled Superbank on how medical waste from hospitals in the Shanti region capital is finding its way into the ecosystem with serious implications. I'm Israel Lai, and Join News Prime comes to you live from the Join News Studio Kukum Limit here in a crowd digital address G8092539. Stay tuned in. Number <music> story the opposition NDC is demanding the arrest and prosecution of senior minister Yao Safamafo for what they describe as breaches of the country's procurement laws. The party cites at a news conference Monday a surcharge in excess of a million dollars imposed on him by the Auditor General as enough evidence for the arrest. The party also wants government to terminate Yoko's probe of the audit service for procurement breaches, which they believe is an attempt to frustrate his efforts at checking corruption at all levels. There is more in the following report. The Auditor General is currently in court challenging Yoko's investigation of his office. The NDC alleges this probe is a state-sponsored agenda aimed at removing Mr. Yaudomolevo from office. Would fair minds not be expecting him to protect the office of an Auditor General who has proven strong his support to the President's call to protect the public purse? The President in the, that plagiarized speech, called for the support of everybody to help him protect public peace. And somebody comes out that the president has urged us to protect, and he's zealously protecting. Now the president says, you have cut the wrong meat. So this one, <laughs> so this one, they go slow. <laughs> The party wants the senior minister to be arrested and prosecuted. The conduct of Ioko unacceptable in the sense that the anti-graft agency is comfortably inviting Yao Domlevo for questioning and granting him bail, but has refused or neglected to invite Yao Safomafo for the same breaches of the Public Procurement Act. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we cannot have two sets of laws in Ghana, one for the family and friends of President Akufuado and another for all the other Ghanaians. If President Akufuado fails to take action on this case of corruption by the senior minister, as we expect he will do, he will have cemented his image as the highest promoter of corruption in the history of Ghana. All right, joining me on the line now is Deputy Information Minister Pius Hachide. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us. My, my first question to you is, is government going to take any action at all or going to prompt the senior minister to actually react or move to the surcharge imposed on him by the Auditor General? Well, thank you very much, Israel. Good evening to you and to our cherished viewers. Uh, from the very onset, let me state that I do not see any tenable foundations laid by, by the NDC for that 
for the calls for the arrest uh, of the senior minister. Uh, the institutions of state uh, that are uh, properly closed with the authority to interrogate these matters uh, should not be intimidated, coerced, or forced, even by the power of advocacy or by the numbers that political parties uh, can marshal uh, to, 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 to take uh, an action uh, that they find desirable. That is not how to build a strong institutions. We must allow the institutions to operate in accordance with the relevant laws that establish them and the best practices that have existed over time. And we cannot encourage the NDC to be determining and controlling and dictating to institutions of state from the from the comfort of their of their national headquarters. Uh, and for the avoidance and I reiterate that I definitely do not see any tenable foundations that have been laid uh, in that call. All right, but granted, we are aware that the senior minister has been searched by the Auditor General for procurement breaches. I'm asking if government is making, if, if there's any movement at all on that, on the part of government. I'm not too sure uh, what uh, steps one is, one is anticipating. There are processes, like I said, that have been laid out. Uh, in the work of the audit, Auditor General and the Audit Service, there are uh, opportunities and tools available for them uh, to, to, to protect the public best. Uh, again, for anybody who is under investigation, there are also opportunities uh, and tools available to also uh, lobby your defense and advocate your innocence. And so the, the two parties must uh, be allowed to fully utilize the opportunities that exist in the law for them. And, and these matters uh, should end up uh, at the platform or uh, those uh, the venues that uh, these matters are properly determined uh, uh, for these matters to be settled. I do not think that it is for, for us uh, to be determining what uh, steps government ought to be taking right. with respect to... Mr. Hachide, at the heart of it all, in the argument that the NDC is making, is that we have uh, an Auditor General who is seen as someone who's going, confronting corruption, you know, head on, and uh, he has taken some action against the senior minister, and nothing much is happening as far as the senior minister's case is concerned, and yet he is being hounded by Yoko for alleged procurement breaches, which he has argued uh, that Yoko is, isn't there. Uh, rights agency to be to be investigating well i do not know since when investigations have become to borrow your words and by extension i believe the word of the ndc that uh, investigations have become hounding i thought that we were just discussing uh, the auditor general's own investigation of somebody else if investigations are, hound, uh, are hounding of people are we by extension also going to be suggesting that people are also being hounded by the work of the Auditor General and the Audit Service, I do not think that can be the position. I think that institutions of state that are duly mandated to do the investigations must be allowed to do the same. You cannot characterize one uh, as, as uh, investigation duly legitimate and characterize the other uh, as, uh, as hounding. You would have been approbating and reprobating on the matter. And, and so I think that uh, we must allow the institutions of state to proceed with their work. My understanding is that uh, there is a matter of misunderstanding of which institution has jurisdiction relative to a matter uh, concerning the audit service and the auditor general. Which matter the auditor general has rightly so uh, taken to before the court. And the courts are the proper place to uh, determine these matters. And so it is not for us to, uh, from the comfort of our offices, call a press conference and seek to interpret the law and impose uh, our interpretation on, 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 on the people of Ghana will be putting our in the subjective reading before uh, 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 the, the law, the course of competent jurisdictions that have the mandate to interpret these laws. And these are our subjective readings and our uh, 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 alliances and allegiances and friendships, all these subjective considerations will collapse before the position of the law. So we must allow the law to take to take its course. And All so right. to, to, for the NDC to argue that 
uh, because the the auditor general is doing an investigation involving somebody uh, in government, and so any other investigation uh, should not and cannot happen. I do not think that that is a tenable position. We well, cannot encourage that. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Pius Hajide. Pius Hajide is Deputy Information Minister. Moving on, public sector workers are threatening to embark on a nationwide strike from the new year over discrepancies with their pension contributions lodged with the Social Security and National Insurance Trust SNIT. Addressing a news conference under the auspices of the Forum for Public Sector Registered Pension Schemes, Executive Secretary of the Civil and Local Government South Association, Isaac Bampo Ado, accused SNIT of shortchanging its members in the computation of their past credits as directed by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, and demanded that the anomalies be fixed. Join News' Henry Kutsibedri has more in the following report. I acknowledge that there are unresolved issues with the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNET, and the NPRA. I've asked the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations to leave the SNET and NPRA to bring finality to all outstanding issues in the next three months. President Ikufuado in May directed the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations and the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, to bring finality to implementation of the three-tier scheme. But executives of the Forum of Public Sector Registered Pension Scheme say nothing has been done about it. Essentially, interest should be computed for each year of contribution from the year of first contribution to date of payment. Additionally, the 91-day Government of Ghana Treasury Bureau rate applicable should be compounded quarterly from the year of first contribution to the date of payment. SNIT had received these directives in September 2019 and aware that their current method of computation is way below the instructions given by the regulator. National Pensions Regulatory Authority. According to the group, the computations by SNIT on the pension contribution is misleading as many workers have raised concerns about the activities of the trust, with most people feeling shortchanged. Without missing words, the forum observes that the statement by SNIT to the effect that pursuant to an agreement reached by the parties as mentioned above, SNIT has recomputed the past credits of members using 100% treasury bill rate, compounded quarterly, captured in that agreement, and that the result of this past credit computation is currently shown on member statements of accounts is highly misleading. Regrettably, state has failed to comply with the NPI directives on past credits. What is stated in its press statements is false, and this is a deliberate attempt to cheat the worker. The forum added they want all outstanding issues settled, failing which they will embark on a nationwide strike by January 1, 2020. The forum has had enough of the issue of past credits, and this should be settled without any further delay. The forum is serving notice that if by 1st January 2020, adequate measures are not put in place to ensure the smooth implementation of the Tier 2 or the three-tier pension scheme, all members of the forum will stay at home in solidarity with our members who will be retiring and will have to receive partial pass credits due to wrong computation by state as a result of non-compliance of the NPI directives on pass credits. Thank you very much. Henry Kwesu Bedu's report for Joy News. Now, there has been extensive damage to several properties at Somenya in the Yolokrobo municipality after a violent windstorm ripped off roofs of a commercial building in the town and pulled down trees, blocking the main Somenya Pong Road in the process. Several homes in the municipality were also damaged as a result, with officials of NADMO and the Ghana National Fire Service now called in to salvage the situation. The NADMO director for Yellow Crow Municipality, Michael Jackson Bruku, has been speaking. We had a distress call that uh, the road from Ukume to Sumanya has been blocked by a windstorm that affects a three 
which serves as a windbreak. So Nadmo Ghana Fire Service and then the Ghana Police Service. We are here now trying to salvage the three members from the road just to make the place very accessible. So this is what is ongoing now. Yes, sir. So have you, have you recorded any casualties? Yes, there were some casualties. So they have been rushed to the Somania Polyclinic for treatment. And um, how, what kind of relief are you bringing to those people? For now, we are now going to the assessment of the affected building and person. So we are NATMO and the Ghana National Fire Service and the police are here just to make the road accessible. After which, we will do, we'll start with the assessment immediately. Well, the NADMO director for Yulo Probo Municipality, Michael Jackson Bruku, joins us on the phone line now with the very latest. Uh, thank you very, very much for making time to speak with us. You mentioned casualties there. What's the very uh, latest update on the casualties? Yes, they were rushed. Some of the affected victims were rushed to the Somania Polyclinic and they were treated and discharged. How many, how many people minor, are we talking about? Minor here? injury as to uh, some of the fallings of the roofing members and some of the trees that crosses the road. How many people are we talking about? As of now, we have treated five of the victims and they were discharged. All right. And how extensive is the damage to property? A lot of damage has been done and... Uh, one of the buildings that accommodates uh, almost two banks, including the Barclays Bank, and it has been in existence for long ago. All the roofing ripped off and then affected the car park. So some of the vehicles that were parked at the, 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 the car park were damaged. And then the wind took the roofing members also and to another building that was opposite the, 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 the building. And then when you get to the Somania Polyclinic area, the tree that also serves as a wind bridge was also affected, blocked the entire road. And then the, the lorry station, we, the assembly has a three-story facility that says the yield of tax microfinance that is also got ripped off. All right. Has and the road has the main road been cleared now? Yes, the road has been cleared. The, as of now, uh, we engage two double machines, and then we've been able to clear the road. But All right. the community, the Somania community. Almost half of the community is blackout. It affects the main source of power that serves the community. So some of the transformers that serve the, the, the community from uh, Jabba Road to Ogometrum and then to Akoli, where we have a water station, are all down. All right. Without I, electricity. All right. I believe the electricity company of Ghana will be attending to that situation. The, thank you very much uh, for that update. You had the NADMO director for Yulo Krobo Municipality, Michael Jackson Bruku, there. Your watching journey is from we're taking a break. We're still ahead in the bulletin. We bring you tonight, we bring you a hotline documentary titled Superbag on how medical waste from hospitals in the Shanti region capital is leaking into the echo system with serious implications uh, for health care. Stay tuned in. We'll be back in a bit. The Metro Environmental Health Office of the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly and officers of the contractor managing Kumasi's main sewer line have been inspecting defects in the system ahead of a stakeholders forum on Friday. The move is aimed at resolving an environmental problem arising from untreated medical waste from 
CAT, uh, that's the Kompanochi Teaching Hospital, and other institutions finding its way into the drains. This meeting was prompted by the Joy News Hotline documentary Superbug, which airs about an hour from now. Erasmus Cesare Donko will give us an update on this meeting in a bit, but that will be after we bring the excerpt of the documentary by Quincy Deborah. I realize that um, this issue has occurred, or this pipe has broken down for more than 15 years. From my discussion with the person who actually have the farm here, it's like people from the town come to buy the sugar cane. The ones that they sell on the roadside, they, they actually come here to buy the sugar cane and go and um, peel them and sell them on the roadside. And this is actually one of the places that they do buy sugar cane. When there's some scarcity in the, in the town. He picked samples from the affluence and down and upstream of the Subin River and adjoining rivers. Vegetables grown along the river were also picked for the presence of 12 commonly used antibiotics in Ghana. Interestingly, after the investigation, all 12 common antibiotics were found. These antibiotics that I looked for were all in the surface water that I looked for. All the 12 were actually found there, almost as natural cyclines. They were all in the surface water and also in the hospital wastewater that I uh, looked for. Then when I went to the levels, the levels that were found were higher in the hospital wastewater and also in the sewage river as compared to the ones that are in the surface water, the low quality water. But how is liquid waste treated at Konfonochi Teaching Hospital? Um, according to our environmental officers, all our liquid waste are diluted with the appropriate chlorine materials to rid it off of all bacteria agent and it lasts for around 15 minutes before it's let down the sink to them to join the main sewage and how has the environmental protection agency been supervising the waste generated by the hospital samuel Otain is regional director we always um, look at some of the high risk activities like you're saying those that are likely to emit into the air or into water bodies. Those ones are constantly put on the satellite and we make sure that we, we monitor them as quickly as possible. The Environmental Protection Agency also have a lab that regularly takes samples and checks, not only on, on, on uh, water quality, we also do for air quality. Right, so at the heart of the story is that scientists at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have found traces of all the 12 commonly used antibiotics in Subing and adjoining rivers in Kumasi and vegetables grown along the river. Joining me on uh, via Skype right now is Erastos Cesare Donko with the very latest on this. So Erastos, this documentary is airing, this hotline documentary is, is airing in about an hour, but before it even goes out on air, the excerpts alone have gotten the authorities to move. Tell us what exactly is being done about it. Well, so authorities are telling me from Confanoche to uh, the city hotel and the military hospitals that they have been spending millions, uh, even before the documentary was done, to uh, fix their sewer, sewer line. And so they have been treating their matter. But the, the uh, issue of concern here is where their sewer line joins the main uh, sewer line. And that is where it has truncated exactly at the ECG office, just opposite the ECG office at Adum. And that is where it's, you know, flowing into uh, the open to join the Subin drain. And that, that's the bone of contention here. Now, authorities have been working around it. I know that there was an inspection uh, between the environmental office of the KMA and the uh, contractor who is managing the sewer line, the main sewer line, uh, that is Environmental Engineering Limited. And so their findings is what I'm not privy to because they are keeping it close to their chest because they, they will be conducting a stakeholders forum on Friday involving all those who uh, put their sewer into the main uh, sewer line to find a lasting solution uh, to this problem. All right, Erasmus, so, so, sorry, don't go there. Thank you very much. But that documentary, as we indicated to you, is coming up uh, in about 
an hour before then uh, we have uh, some more stories to bring you we bring you business news and coming up in business economist professor peter quarter he is backing the money policy committee's decision to maintain the lending rate at 16 percent for the fifth time this year do stay tuned in <laughs> Vice President Dr. Mamadou Baumia has announced that President Kufado will this Friday break grounds for work to begin on the Palugu multi-purpose dam. The project, estimated at 750 million US dollars, comes with a 25,000 hectare irrigation scheme, which will boost rice production by up to 117,000 tons per year and made by up to 49,000 tons. Dr. Baumia was speaking at the 31st edition of the Kakuba Festival at Nandom in the Upper West region. Join us, Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam report from Nandom. Kakube is celebrated by the chiefs and people of the Nandom traditional area to mark the end of the farming season and to show appreciation to God for his guidance and protection during the rainy season. It is also an occasion for the people to renew their relationship, exhibit and preserve the real culture and tradition of the area. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia stated that since the MPP came to power, they have embarked on a series of programs and policies intended to make the lives of the people better. Free SHS is taking place. We are going to bring an iron and steel factory in the Yendi Kushegu area to use our iron deposits. Teacher training allowances have been restored and nursing training allowances have been restored. Without peace, there is no development and our government has brought peace by the grace of God to the people of Dagon. In the north, we have also created two additional regions in Savannah and Northeast and we are also implementing one district, one factory. Well, he has been described as Ghana's dancing teacher, this young man with less than a year of teaching experience is making waves, breaking conventional teaching and learning norms by bringing music and arts to the classroom. My colleague Justice Vedu caught up with Percy Saki in the eastern region town of Obo in our reports. Let's go! Test! Wax! Test! Inside the Obo Presby School on the Quo Hills, Percy Saki is leading his class two pupils for a maths lesson. Fast, 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 Percy fast. is not your everyday fast, kind fast. of a class two teacher. He's teaching them how to pronounce numbers. They are not just looking and saying. When I came here, I saw that the truancy was very high. Then I started, aside from that, the uh, teacher people's relationship too was very low. So what, what am I going to do to uh, build up um, this case uh, the teacher people's relationship, what am I going to do to build up their self-confidence, their self-capability, self-esteem? He has become an internet sensation and now has started a foundation so other children can learn. The children in Percy's class say that Unlike those who came before them, they now want to stay in school and learn, in part because of Sir Percy's fun way of teaching. During weddings, uh, funerals, uh, naming ceremony, we use entertainment, which is uh, the entertainment is, which means the entertainment is part of us. So even bringing it to the classroom is not a bad thing. Right. So we're bringing you some breast cancer tips as part of our health matters. <music>
It's our time to bring you our hotline documentary, Superbug. So stay tuned in.